Hello, welcome back to my channel. We're outside right now because it is nice. It is so nice and it is scorching, scorching hot, so we are in the shadows. I've got my um, kidlets behind me. Come on guys, come say hi. <laughs> come. Hi Peter. It is currently 38 degrees Celsius, but uh, you okay? <laughs> you good? You good? Okay, all right, cool. What's that? That's a microphone. What? Okay, shh. This guy right here just had a birthday. He turned eight. So, um, so this, this next video, um, that's tough. <laughs> thank you. Are you implying that I'm a cow? Excuse me. So, um, Kesh, this next video is, uh, we're going to take you on a road trip to Calgary um, for a top surgery consultation um, with uh, my plastic surgeon. Uh, so, yeah, enjoy. Hi, hi, hi. I'm Ashton, and I'm transgender. This is me. This is my life. I'm not going anywhere. Yay! Finally got it figured out. Hey! We're on our way to Calgary. So, yes, so we're on the way to see a surgeon uh, in Calgary who also happens to be a very close family friend um, about top surgery. Oh. We're to find out what's involved. Ashton had to go see a psychiatrist to get approved yeah. for top surgery. I had to I had to get approval. That was a phone to shoot and see that. A huge chunk of ice just flew up and hit my windshield. Blew off the car in front of us. God. Well. Still speeding. Bye. What's speeding? Also, we had to look out for a lot of black ice. Uh, black ice is nearly invisible to see. Um, so doesn't look much different than a wet highway. Yeah. But yeah, when you slide on that, you slide on that. <laughs> it is slippery. You know, so, you know it's black ice when you go outside, please. Yes. Are you speeding again? Yes. Remember a drive to Jasper going 140? That would have been a big ticket. Yeah, but you weren't wearing any pants. I was making. I had to go down the path. I had to, I had to get there quick. These are kilometers an hour, by the way. Yeah, this is, this is the first time that we're going to be on, on camera together, actually. <laughs> Wes Doyle, everybody. He's the DP. Welcome to our show. Hey, if we see a gas station, we need to stop. Because I have to pee. And it's not like I can pee at the side of the road. Because I don't have a penis. So... <laughs> Do you if you guys hear the loud bangs, by the way, it's just ice and rocks hitting windshields. Here, where we live, it's minus 40. It gets to minus 60. Last that was a wind chill. That was a wind chill. Yeah. yeah, minus 40 actual. Yes. Ah, oh, here we are coming into it here. Awesome. You'll be able to pee within the next 15 minutes. halfway there. Made it. Made it. Your truck is covered in salt. How is that? <laughs> <laughs> From the salty highways. This is our pretty out there though. Hi, we're finally in Calgary. We wanted to go into Banff. Banff is uh what the mountains are here but uh because of our time crunch and the kids are still at home we cannot go to the mountains right now 
the Canadian Rockies. I love the Canadian Rockies. I'll bring you guys to the Canadian Rockies soon. I can't see anything. Hi, finally here. Are we recording? There's a car in the background going beep, beep, beep. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to ask you just a couple of general kind of more health questions, okay. and then we'll kind of talk specifically about this thing, okay? Yeah. And where would you, like before, when you're wearing bras, what size would you be? Um, before or after kids? <laughs> I think after the kids, I was probably, I wasn't even really feeling an A cup. I was really, really small. Okay, 34, 36? 36. 36, yeah. yeah. Okay, so after kids, did you end up with a bit of loose skin as well? A little bit, but it's kind of shrunken back a bit. Mm -hmm. You don't have the necessity to get rid of every last drop of breast tissue. Right. You just need to get rid of enough stuff to make things flat. Mm -hmm. And then you're dealing with whatever skin there is, and that's the biggest issue is mm -hmm. what you need to do for scars and how, because you've got no good place to hide those. Okay, mm -hmm. so occasionally you see people that have pretty good quality skin and are pretty small mm -hmm. and you can do an operation that's similar to um, a male gynecomastia, right. yeah. okay, which involves just a cut around the nipple and it doesn't leave you a whole lot of scar. Mm -hmm. But if there's a bit of loose, thinner skin and you deflate it, you could end up with a bunch of skin that rolls. Mm -hmm. So then you have to cut out some of the skin mm -hmm. and you got to look at a, a place that makes sense to mm -hmm. do that. Yeah. Okay, the other thing is typically women have a bigger areola. Mm -hmm. Okay, so usually you usually want to try and make that smaller. Mm -hmm. So the commonest thing that happens in somebody that's got a bit of extra skin and a big areola is that you actually remove some of that skin, you do a mastectomy similar to what you do for a cancer operation, you just orientate the scar a little differently. Right. And then basically take the nipple, make it quite a bit smaller, so you just have something small, and you basically paste that back on as you were, as a skin graft. Right. Okay, so that you can make it small and put it where you want to. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. typically with men, you're trying to tr make the scar so it kind of follows more kind of the shape of your pec muscle. Mm -hmm. Okay, a standard mastectomy for breast cancer type of thing is usually straight across. Right. Okay, yeah. that, that's okay, but it's not a, it's not a, nice a place to put the scar. Ideally you put it a bit of curve, but it mm -hmm. depends what you've got for size of the nipple yeah. and how much loose skin where that's going to yeah. have to be. Okay, the other tough part is getting it smooth and level. Okay, Especially after kids, you may find that your skin is pretty thin, the bit of fat that's underneath there is pretty thin, and then you hit breast tissue almost right away. Mm -hmm. Whereas the skin and fat and the area around it can be you know, thicker skin, thicker fat. Okay, so it's not uncommon for people with a breast cancer type of operation to end up a bit dented because they've taken all that out and there just mm -hmm. isn't enough left behind. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. In this case, like I say, you don't necessarily have to get every last bit of breast tissue out, mm -hmm. okay, and that may make it a bit more level. That does, I mean, you do have some issues in terms of cancer risks long term, right? right? So you still run the risk of having breast cancer in the bit that's left over. Mm -hmm. Okay, you still run the risk of having uh, ovarian or endometrial cancer. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of a tendency, especially in terms of the ovaries and things, that mm -hmm. you know, once you've transitioned, mm -hmm. you kind of forget about that part of your health mm -hmm. equation. Mm -hmm. You can't do that because yeah. it really sucks to kind of go through all this and then yeah. end up with an ovarian cancer down the yeah. road. Your, your ovaries are still beneficial in terms of the health of your bones. Yeah. So they're still protective in terms of osteoporosis. You don't want to forget that part of your health yeah. equation because yeah. you, you have to take care of that at mm -hmm. some point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can tell you about the how the surgery works, give you an idea of what you're looking at for scars, okay. tell you what the risks are, 
Okay, and then we'll organize all that stuff. Evil surgery. Well, I, that's the people who have pretty good skin. Because yeah. occasionally you see people that haven't had any kids. Yeah. They were on hormones pretty early, so they got really tiny breasts mm -hmm. and not a lot of skin. Okay, mm -hmm. So that one, you make a cut that just comes halfway around the nipple. Mm -hmm. And then through that cut, you can go inside and basically scoop out the breast tissue. You leave the skin behind and it just caves down. Yeah. Sometimes you can do things where you could do something kind of around the nipple with kind of a dart rather than a bigger scar if there's only a little bit of skin that you have to get rid of. Mm -hmm. So there's some different patterns, if you will. Mm -hmm. So a bit of that is a bit of a guess as to how much extra skin is there that you have to try and deal with. Mm -hmm. you, you can, like I've done things where you think you're on the bubble mm -hmm. of being able to get away with the keyhole. Mm -hmm. Then you do the keyhole, see what it's like, and at the end, you get a kind of a saggy pouch there. Mm -hmm. okay? well, and then you're either yeah. living with that Okay, or you got to go back and you yeah. know make and a I'd, scar. I'd rather the scar than that hangy, you know, because yeah. I. Yeah, you would need drains. Yeah. So you got plastic hoses. The plastic hoses are stitched in. They stand for a week. Mm -hmm. Typically, you can take the bandage off, kind of clean things up. But it depends what you do with the nipple. Okay, if you've done a, a graft with the nipple, there's a piece of bandage actually sold on to you, okay. and you have to keep that dry until you come back to see me about a week later. Okay. Okay. So, depending on what that is, you may be able to shower or you may not. Okay. It does. When scars are fresh, they're always a bit bumpy. They get pretty red. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes a while for all that stuff to heal. The scars for them to fade mm -hmm. is going to take a year. Okay. okay. So they're red and a bit thick, and then gradually they get a little smoother and flatter and whiter. Mm -hmm. Okay. They never disappear. You make right. a cut, you got a scar. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then I'll. I'll kind of look at how much skin you got, what your nipples like, and I'll give you an idea as to what your options are in terms of scar okay. patterns. And, and can what you we actually do. take like some of the nipple out? And I know there'd probably be some damage to Yeah, the there's so. different things that you can do there. It depends yeah. on how much surgery you're doing at the time. Okay, but you can do things to try and make it so that it flattens down. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you take it off and put it on as a graft, it tend to flatten out quite a bit anyway. Okay. 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 Uh, and then sometimes it's better to do that after. Because okay. you don't want to, with all of these, there's, there's some potential for issues with the nipple healing. Okay, when you put it on as a graft, mm -hmm. okay, you, you, once you've taken it off, for it to survive, it has to basically get nourishment from where you stick it. If it doesn't get enough nourishment, then some of it dies. Yeah. Okay, and the toughest part of that is the actual nipple. Okay. okay, the areola is a pretty thin piece of skin, but the nipple itself has got some beef to it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So because it's thicker, it needs more juice right. to keep right. it alive mm -hmm. and they do tend to sometimes partly die okay. okay and if it gets all scabby as it heals it ends up a lot flatter so if you're putting it on as a graft you wouldn't mess with the height of the nipple at that time right. you okay. kind of see where it ends up right. and it, you might find that one's different than the other that you don't touch one and you have to do something the other to make them more even right okay okay look? you look magnificent Yeah, so you're in a bit of a bubble situation, right? So you've got that little bit of loose skin. You can almost imagine if you deflate the bit of breast tissue you've got in there, okay, that skin is probably going to lay like this, but it'll leave you like a little roll right down here. Okay, yeah. Okay, which isn't going to be awful. Yeah. The advantage of that is it doesn't leave you a bunch of extra scars. You just have that like keyhole. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't shrink down the size of this that much, but once you deflate it underneath, mm -hmm. there's a tendency for this to do a little bit of that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so that the brown circle will get a tiny bit smaller. Okay, but not way smaller. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's you don't have enough extra skin to place a scar that's kind of way off to the side and then put on a nipple graft. Because okay. you know you'd be cutting out like that. Okay. Okay, now that makes it tighter, right? Because I can yeah. make the skin smoother. Yeah. And if I make a cut like that, you're going to have a scar that runs kind of like this. Oh, yeah. Okay, I can't get it down. Like, I'd still put it in a bit of a curve because yeah. it sort of follows the direction that your pec muscle goes. Right. But I can't put it down so it's like way down here because yeah. I have to cut around that part. So if you cut around that part, come to here, come to there, that's about how long the scar is. So would it be like right across my pack then? Yeah, it'd be right like right where I'm pinching you here. Uh, like that's where things would come together. 
Right? That's like so one you, place I wanted to avoid a scar was like on my pack. <laughs> yeah. So you yeah. got a trade off here because mm -hmm. that's where you can cut out the skin, mm -hmm. okay? And then if you were going to put on a nipple afterwards because you're pulling that a little tighter, mm -hmm. you'd probably pot potentially paste that on so it's a little bit higher and a bit out to the side because a male nipple tends to be a little bit more this way, a little mm -hmm. less towards the middle. Right. And then you could make that fairly small and it would flatten that down a little bit to put on his graft. Mm -hmm. When you put it on his graft, it doesn't all stick. So sometimes he gets pretty scabby and that can give you a kind of a blotchy color to it instead of something that's uniform. Okay, if you do the keyhole type surgery, mm -hmm. then the nipple's healthier looking. Okay, it just keeps a little bit of the same characteristics mm -hmm. it's got now. You've got, yeah. you can tell that this skin's pretty thin, right? Yeah. And stretchy, it's different from the skin that's yeah. here and here. Yeah. Right? So it's not going to suck in tight, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, as that deflates, it may lay in there mm -hmm. more or less like that, so that mm -hmm. there's kind of a little looseness, but not necessarily like a yeah. thing that overhangs. Yeah. Okay, and you end up in the end that there's kind of a little roll of skin right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, you might sort of say, well, I'm okay where the nipple is, I'm okay with what the nipple looks like, this mm -hmm. is all smooth enough. Mm -hmm. I'll take a scar that goes from here to here and just kind of directly trim off the little roll that's at the bottom. Right. Okay, okay so you end up with a little thing there. Yeah. You potentially end up with a smaller scar out of that than if I cut out the nipple and try and move it. Mm -hmm. You do potentially end up with the nipple being a little bit low, right? Because right? yeah. like, it's down here and normally, like if you, like if you yeah. did that and flatten it all out, you'd expect that nipple is going to be more like here someplace, right? Yeah. If you do it with the keyhole, okay, mm -hmm. so a cut that comes just underneath here, mm -hmm. okay, you don't have to worry as much about the trouble with the nipple healing, mm -hmm. you know, the blotchiness, things like that. The thickness and things of the nipple stays pretty much the same. You wouldn't mess with that at the time, okay? Mm -hmm. You scoop out things underneath, then potentially you got that little bit of looseness. Mm -hmm. With any of them, you run the risk of having something that's not smooth. Like as right. you scoop out the breast tissue, the thickness of what you left behind, ideally you're trying to make that so that's all kind of the same thickness, so it lays down smooth. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't always come out that way. You can get thin spots, okay. and a thin spot would end up leaving a little dint or a hollow. Okay, and you can play with those. You can suck fat from someplace and squirt them in there. Mm -hmm. So you can play around to make it a bit more level, but it's hard to make them disappear. Mm -hmm. okay? okay? So. Again, you've got a trade-off here, like most people do with this. Some people, there's no options, mm -hmm. like they got something that hangs. Yeah. You have to make the big cut. Right. And if it, if, you know, if it starts, if it looks, after everything's healed and stuff, and I do it, like that, that sort of keyhole type surgery. Yeah. Um, if I wanted to come, like say if the nipple's not in the right spot, can I just move it over? It's not bad this direction, it's just mm -hmm. that it's a bit low. I mean, low, I, okay. ideally it would be, you know, maybe a little bit more up. Right. There, okay, and this would be a little bit smoother, so okay. it just sits down a little bit lower. It's got that little bit of crinkle. Okay, you still have some options if yeah. it was pretty loose. Like you could yeah. always cut out that whole piece that I was talking about mm -hmm. cutting out. Mm -hmm. You can always take the nipple and put it back on as a skin graft if you feel afterwards that it's mm -hmm. just too, too just too saggy and it just doesn't sit right. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. can't go the other way, obviously. No, yeah. Okay. I like that idea like of just doing kind of like that keyhole and seeing where it goes. So a couple of things, you put the drain in, okay? Mm -hmm. Afterwards, I'd wrap you up with the tensor bandage because you put some pressure on it because you don't want it to bleed, mm -hmm. okay? I may put some stitches from the back side of the nipple to the front side of the muscle to okay. try and... Now the trouble with that is, that, you know, sometimes that will cause oh. it to pull in or dimple. Right. But you're, you're trying to take that piece of skin and say, well, I'd like it to stick to the muscle there because mm -hmm. then it smooths out some of the stuff at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so we'd probably try and tack it a little bit to see if you can get it to yeah. sit up a little bit higher mm -hmm. so that it doesn't have that little deflated roll at the bottom. Okay. Just a little bit too much skin to get away with the keyhole and know that it's going to work. Right. Okay, so if you do that, then there's a chance that at the end, you know, it just doesn't look as smooth or as tight as what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And then Which you I might have to revisit and, yeah. Yeah, and cut out some skin and do some other things at that I point. Think, I think I'd be more comfortable with that because then I have that option, right? Instead of just going in and being like, damn, I got these scars now yeah. that I don't want. So this is the least visible of the scars, right? but it's going to leave behind all of the skin. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. but if that would be... I think that's not a bad way to go just because you're pretty close to being able to get away with that. Mm -hmm. 
And if you do get away with it, that would be way nicer because you don't have the extra scars. Right, because I, you know, I don't know, like my skin is, um, it, it heals pretty well. Yeah. So I don't know, but I mean the skin it's, is obviously stretched. But, yeah, because these have been huge been, four times, like out to here. Yeah, <laughs> they've been really big. <laughs> yeah. But I had like D's. They were like every single time they were out to here, and, they, and then they shrunk back to this. So, <laughs> I was like, you know. In terms of feeling, as soon as you cut out everything that's underneath the nipple, you cut out most of the nerves that go to it. Now, you still got the skin around it connected, okay, so you get some feeling, but it's kind of fuzzy. Like, the whole works is kind of fuzzy, and it will never come back to normal. So, as far as healing goes, there's not a lot that, there's just a dissolving stitch in there, so there's not a lot that has to glue together, okay, but you do have to stick the back side of the skin to the front side of your pec muscle, okay? So, part of that is the drain, so you got that hose in there, to suck out any juice to help it stick. I'm probably going to put a couple of stitches in to tack it and we'll bind you for a little bit. A little bit of pressure helps to hold things smooth and flat. Okay, so there'll be some wrapping and binding and stuff after that for that. Okay, okay. you don't want to leave the drain in forever, so usually it's in there about a week. And you want to limit what you do with your arms for the first couple of weeks to allow it to stick. So you've got something to put some pressure from the outside and not doing a whole bunch of this so there's not much of that happening. Okay? okay. Okay. And then, of course, training. As soon as everything's all stuck, like within a month, it's just when it doesn't hurt anymore, okay. you can go ahead and do stuff again. Okay. You just have to wait until it's stuck. You okay. know, once you're happy it's stuck, then it's just how sore it is. You're not going to wreck anything. Okay. Okay? Well, okay. Any questions you got about any of this stuff? I don't think so. I think that's... Okay. this all makes sense. It's pretty tight when I get the surgery too, or the ones that come halfway. I guess I have to use my legal name, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so here we are. Here we are. Out for sushi after your big medical appointment. Yes. That went well. That was fun. That really went well. Um, and my surgeon, he's retiring in about a year, so I was able to get, uh, actually, what, that's actually, that's lucky, because of that cancellation, I was approved for, for top surgery, and if I hadn't have been approved, he, our family friend, wouldn't have been able to do it. Because he would have been retired before you were ready. Yeah. Had all approvals. Yeah. yeah. And on top of that, it was still covered, because I was able to get approval, and I didn't go off on my own to go get it, so that is also awesome. Awesome. Yeah, that's like... <laughs> That's some, that's some wicked luck right there. See, the advantage of living in Canada, you can get top surgery for free. Yes, yes. And I was looking at, uh, I had already been waiting a year to see a psychiatrist about it. Uh, and I was looking at another, at least another year to see him. So, I got lucky because they got a cancellation and then I was, they called me up. So, and then I was approved right away. Here we are, on our way back to Edmonton, what is it, what is it now, it's, it's exactly 5.51, and it is pitch black. We're in Alberta. We're in Canada. Up in Canada, where the sun goes down at 4.30. In the winter. In the winter. In the winter. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. It's still early in the day. Boots. 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 Can boobs. you say boots? Boots. Because it's boobs. Because it's boobs. And then home, back to the kids. We will probably be up and rowdy and crazy. They are. The kids will be waiting for you? Oh, they'll probably they'll be awake. Oh, yeah. Well, they got no school tomorrow. That's true. They got the day off, so they, they can They got stay the week up. off. But it's okay, because we've got our gummy worms. And we've got our jack rings. Beef turkey. No, bacon. Bacon turkey. And we've got our junior mints. Junior mints. And we've got like some salted almond. Almond nuts. Almond nuts. So we're laughing. Yeah, we're good. And if you if you bring out your phone, you got some porn. Better keep you awake. <laughs> Anything else to talk about that's fit to broadcast? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> our conversations are usually not very PG. <laughs> yeah, so six months. Six months. I'll have to wait probably before I can get top surgery. So that's actually pretty good. 
it's really a fast track. Yeah, especially Actually. since I was like, I still had at least a, at least a year in me or more to wait to get to even talk to a psychiatrist about getting approved for top surgery. And yeah, and now we've already talked to the to my surgeon about about uh, getting it in like six months or so. So I feel like ice cream. So a year on testosterone is what they want to typically see before they even consider any sort of invasive uh, surgery. They will want you to make sure that it is what you want. My seatbelt's locked and I can't lean forward and reach my tea. <laughs> it's getting old. It's a 2011. Well, it's getting it's old. It's a pretty good shape for a 2011. I take care of my shit. Okay, um, after this wind dies down, then uh, we'll start talking. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope that you, um, th there was uh, some questions that uh, got answered that um, you were curious about. It was, uh, it was certainly informative uh, for me as well, just to sort of know what direction I was going to go in. Um, so uh, the video was shot about six months ago. So um, as you can see, now, they're, they're gone. <laughs> Get back here. The kids weren't with me during uh, the consult because it was right in COVID times. So we weren't allowed to bring kids, um, but I probably wouldn't have brought them anyway. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, like and subscribe. Uh, hit the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching. Say bye, guys. Bye. Ahoy. Ahoy. <laughs> Okay, stop, 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 stop. Oh, you got a straight. <laughs> 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 <laughs>